What's up guys, it's Kyle from Red Fox Arms here. So, not standing in this video, I'm kind of stuck in the corner at a low level, sitting down so I can kind of make this happen here for you guys. But this video is all about how the cheap depth mics have seemed to have gone away, whether that be from uh, China tariffs or from a virus going around that I cannot name because YouTube will pull this down. Um, not sure why they all went away. I recall seeing them at Harbor Freight for 25 bucks or so. Now they're not even listed on the website. I couldn't find a depth mic at all. Um, so if you look at the SKS install video or AK site install video also, it should tells you, it kind of shows you a Harbor Freight $10 uh, digital caliper uh, listing. So you can go get one for just 10 bucks and that's a good cheap way out. You're gonna lose some accuracy uh, most people, guys with rifles might notice, guys with handguns probably won't. Um, you won't notice that little two, three thou difference here and there. But uh, using the tail of a caliper is quite a bit less accurate than a depth mic. Machinists don't do that. Um, not, we do it, if we do do it, it's to make sure that we didn't read the depth mic wrong. We just kind of back up our number and make sure, yeah, that's, I'm not off by 25 or something, which... If you've learned to read a depth mic because of our videos, you know how each line works. You know, it's easy to misread a number because it's kind of covering it. Um, so what we'll do, first things first, I'll show you how to kind of do this on a Glock. And again, I haven't been to Harbor Freight in a while, so I don't know if they still have them in stock. But I do not have a $10 Harbor Freight uh, digital caliper. I've got an older Starrett. And it's a dial caliper. Uh, you can get a dial caliper too. If you know how to read them, I just listed a digital one. I think most people would have an easier time reading that instead of trying to figure out all the increments on here. Because um, the digital one will tell you, you know, 0.265, which is what I got on my SKS over here. And I'll show you that in a minute. So what you'll do, you'll want to kind of clean these off because you can measure dirt, lint, whatever. Even the tail kind of, I take my fingers and kind of pinch it and wipe down. So... Like right there, it's a great example. So I just cleaned this, and it zeroed a minute ago. We're a little past zero now. It wasn't clean when it got zeroed, which is easy, you just rotate the dial, but you don't be measuring stuff like that. Because when you're not having it closed all the way, you're measuring, let's say, the thickness of the slide. Well, now you're gonna be one thou off small. So what we're gonna do, extend the caliper with the dial, the thumb wheel. We'll extend the tail and open the jaws and everything. This front side's easier, so what you're going to do is get in the dovetail, get up against the sight. I always go to the back to get away from the serrations a little bit because you don't want to measure the depth of those. You'll think you're off by a lot when you're not. So slowly come in. I'll try to lie. Line it up for you guys a little better. That was touching. All right. We can. So yeah, slide it in, keep it square. Both this way and this way. You want it square and you want to just push so light and let it square up to the slide on its own. Boom. Make sure you don't rock it when you get off because you'll make it read small. So I got 124. Now this side, you don't want to point at your face, so kind of point it over your shoulder and up. Same thing, and you get down in there. You might have to can't rotate it a little bit, not cant it, but rotate it to get away from the serration, that's okay. So make sure you don't point it at your face. And slowly come in until it touches. I'm going real slow because I'm trying to stay in the frame here. Get off. I got 130 on that one. So six, that's way off. <clears throat> what I normally like to get it, I like to get it within two thousandths. Um, but I trust my depth mic, which said it was within two. So you'll see what I mean. Uh, it'll get you close enough for most people. Um, most people, this will be fine. And for the front, this is the only way to check it. It's really hard to install it this way. 
Um, you can kind of do the human comparator method, I guess, where you get alongside it and you eyeball it. But what you'll do, same thing, tail. And you'll go to the back of the site because that's where you look. You know, that's where it's really going to be magnified if it's off. If it's off a thou up here, it's going to be off like six up here. So, or back here. So for install, you can't really do this because you're pushing on it. You're going to influence it, and it's just going to push away from you. So, same thing is leveled and flat and square and everything else as you can. Bump it. 421. Over your shoulder. Doing this side is always fun because you're surprised when you see the number. That sounds wrong. That's the problem with this. That's better. All right. That's 429. Again, it's off. It's off the opposite way, which should probably work out okay, honestly. Um, you know, one's this way, one's that way. It's going to pull you kind of back. Um, actually, it wouldn't. It would make it worse. It'd magnify it. But uh, again, a death mic said we're good to go. So. My death mic, I trust it plenty. Um, right now, the cheapest death mic I saw was a hundred bucks. So, you're, uh, you know, most guys aren't probably gonna not want to get that. You can get a. These are about fifteen to twenty. I refrain for a dial. Um, just get the digital. I mean, they're ten bucks for the worst like multicolored one they have. It's and I say multicolored not because it like shows different colors, but it is different colors. It's like a toy looking thing. But, uh, yeah, so we'll go on to the SKS now. All right. Oh, camera's at a good height. Look at that. So, again, you're going to want to go in through this hole for the adjustment up here. And make sure you feed out enough. So what I'm probably going to have to do is flip the caliper upside down because there's that little notch. Where's the camera? Notch right in the tail of it. I always hated that. Um, I thought it was pretty stupid. So I kind of wish it was just square. And it's not something you can just grind off. Like the caliper will just read wrong then. So you're going to want to go through there. And you're going to want to show the orientation. You want the caliper lean in this way, not this way. Then you'll get a nicer square result here. And I'll show you why in a sec when it, I do it. So you got to get that little tiny part of the tail up against... Oh man, it's gonna be a little tricky. The sight, but make sure that fat end of the tail is inside the hole. I'm not measuring that difference, and you're gonna slide it in. Just bring it in, and you're gonna just kind of just make sure you get it nice and square against both ends. All right. That time I got two sixty-seven, which I think is the number I said my SKS. AK site post install video. So I actually did get it really close with this one. It's easier to be square on this though than it is on the Glock. Even though the Glock's boxy, it is the serrations, the big radiuses. But again, even with the caliper, you're gonna get a lot closer than gun shop will get you. So you know, still don't be afraid to do your own uh, site installs. I mean, especially on the handgun. I, I've told my horror story in the Glock site install video. Those guys just wrenched on it as hard as they could and came out like he won a, you know, like he just won a contest. Like, oh man, it was tough, but I got him in there. And it's like, okay, cool. And then, middle of a class, next thing I know, the sites are just backing off. And yeah, he ruined them. <laughs> so, not to mention this, that screw got down in the plunger hole in MP and bent in half. And then it was real fun to get all that out. So, like I said in that video, you're going to get in what you put out, or you're going to get out of it what you put in, sorry. And you shouldn't be afraid to do it because nobody's going to care more about doing it right than you. So that gun shop guy is getting paid either way, all right? You can screw the gun completely up and his boss is going to chew him out. It's the boss's problem. So, you know, for you, it's your problem. You care. You're going to do it right. You're going to be careful. You're going to do what we tell you to do because we've done a lot of them. So that's how you do that. Um, real quick, in case you do get a dial caliper, I guess I'll give you a quick overview on how to read it. So we're going to open it nice and wide. Let's see if I can focus on numbers. So you have zero, 
You have a bunch of numbers up to nine, and you have a big one. And you have a bunch of numbers up to nine, and then a two. The big numbers are obviously inches, and all those numbers in between are 0.1 inches. So it's 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5, on and on, up to one inch. That's 1.1, 1 1.2, 1 1.3. 1 now this is three place decimal stuff. So the dial now is the last two numbers. So let me put it somewhere and I'll show you guys and I'll read it to you. And I'll make it a nice number. Okay, so it's not gonna focus well, but you see that big one and that goes all the way up to, what is that, an eight? That's an eight. And then we have 25 on the dial. That's 1.825. That's how you read that. So that's how you do that. I hope the death mites come back. Um, not sure if it's because of the uh, <laughs> can't say the name of it. Um, YouTube will pull this down automatically, but I don't know if it's because of that or the China terrorists may be caught up with us a little bit. Um, you know, we we use name brand measuring tools but you guys i don't expect you to have a 200 hundred dollar depth mic just for putting sites on every once in a while where a 25 dollar tool hey you can use that you know um it'll it's one thing that'll pay for itself in ammo you know quickly so um i hope those come back if not i mean we're looking at doing a kind of an armor's tool right now that's Mostly for handguns. Um, there'll be separate tools, obviously, but the handgun one, which would let you use a caliper to check where you're at and uh, make sure you get your rear sight centered that way and your front also. The front will be different on Glock. Man, I hate to make you guys buy an extra tool, but... Uh, man. The Glock's front sights, I thought it was the coolest thing when I started like making sights, and then I realized quickly what a pain it is. Making... And uh, the install is the real pain. Um, I mean, some people think, well, it makes the install easy, but it does, but then you're just gonna, it's not perfect. You could throw that, you know, front side on there and just kind of move your windage in the rear until it's right, but you're just gonna be shooting a lot that way. Where the death mic method and even this caliper method, this is far closer than a bore sight still. I don't trust a bore sight for shit. Uh, I've been wrong by those a few times and you're depending on a lot of tolerance stacking and they're usually made in China and uh, yeah, they're not that accurate. Um, so like the death mic method, I mean, these guns are death mic in. There's an ammo shortage right now and I know they're on, I'll, I trust it. I don't have to go out to the range and put rounds through and then drift my sights over. No, no, I might, at worst, at like 30 yards, I might hit an inch left or right. I mean, the way those look probably left, but I don't. That would be a good group for me to even notice that. So, but that might get you really close. That's why we prefer it. Like I said, we're looking at an armor's tool, making one. And the thing is, it won't be cheap, so it's going to be harder to, you know, get into. But it'd be all stainless. We like stainless. And... It would let you use a caliper to verify your center line. The Glocks that one would have to be a separate tool. Like you'd have a normal handgun sight tool and then you'd have the Glock front sight tool, which kind of sucks, but it is where it is. And then for the SKS, um, that'd be a really simple tool. But if you already got the caliper, honestly, that's the way to do it. If you don't have, I wouldn't recommend it that I don't even know if we're going to make that because it's so not worth it, you know. I mean, I think in the, the install video for the SKS post when I did it, uh, to demonstrate for you guys how to do it, I got my number I needed to match was 267, and the caliper said 267. So that's right there. So I hope that helps you guys. Um, I'll have something at the end of this that gives you some skews for Harbor Freight for that cheap caliper and a picture of it and whatnot. And, another explanation of what's going on and hopefully that helps um it's a ten dollar tool so luckily it's not too bad you were online you probably get them on amazon i'm sure you need them on amazon i just don't know if they're as cheap but you might get free shipping if you already have prime um 
but it's still cheaper than a death mic. It'll get you relatively close, but you just lose some advantages of death mic. Um, I was thinking about a different way to do an armor's tool right there. Sorry. Um, but you'll get better results and I mean I'm trying to think a box of 50 normally for 9mm at least in my area is $18, $20 so you know if you save 25 rounds in trying to get your sights on it's worth it already and that's just on one gun now you have a tool to keep doing it so it's not such a big deal to buy it but um yeah, <laughs> uh, I still like the death mic. That's how we do it, but we also do it a lot because you know making new stuff, testing new stuff. Um, I hope that helps you guys. That's how we you can do it with a caliper. It's it's not ideal, but again, it's better than a gun shop or trying to eyeball stuff because that's what they're gonna do is eyeball it. And uh, if you look at a Glock slide, there's a lot of. Uh, I'm trying to point it at me. You know, you got those radiuses there. Who's to say those are exactly the same? These radiuses up here. Who's to say those are exactly the same? So if you try to eyeball it, you're up going to try to like look at it off that. You're going to get an illusion there. And you're going to be off, you know, let's say this one is bigger than this one. Well, now you're going to be farther this way because you're eyeballing off this little perceived edge. It's not really a nice edge. And you'll do the same in the front, and even if you eyeball it perfectly, based on the radiuses and stuff, you're going to be off. So, that's when we measure things. Um, and it's always nice to know that the sights are on. Because um, people go through learning curves with new sights sometimes. Um, when you change something on your gun, or you buy a new gun, and you start shooting it, you're like, man, there's a little bit of a learning curve on it, because I just got to change one little thing. So... It's nice to take some variables out to know, hey, these sites should be good. Um, so that's what we try to do. We try to get them right down the middle the first time. And the rest of it's up to the ammo manufacturer and Glock, as far as we're concerned. Um, if you can get the sites put in the middle, we know we did our part, you know, as far as our machining goes. So that's all up with the Glock and your ammo manufacturer at that point. So, again, hope that guy that helps you guys. Um I like to say stay tuned. We'll see if we can get something to help you guys out as far as our own sight pusher that would work with a caliper for inspecting. Um, still kind of playing with that in my head a little bit as far as how that would look um, and not be a $100 part, especially. You don't want a $100 sight tool. I, mean, I guess that's not outrageous in 2020, but still, you know, we don't, we're not doing this to be, you know, a $100 million company. We're doing this, you know, we're charging shop rates. So, again, hope that helps. Have a good one, guys. I hope you enjoy your sites. Um, don't forget, if you have any questions, you can email. Just use the subject line um, support and do it at redfoxarms at gmail.com. That's just our kind of account that we have you guys flood in. Um, it's easy. Um, to use Gmail, and I can get them on my phone. And that's the big thing, as I can just respond to you guys right now. You know, if it was to get one right now, I'd go, huh, okay, let's let's think about this. So that way you're not betting on me being in front of a computer. Um, well, that's it, guys. I hope you enjoy your sites. I hope you have good days. See ya.